all my friends that served in combat have the exact same symptoms or same experiences. The hardest thing with uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome is going to the VA and saying, yeah, I need, I need you to help me out. I'm, and I'm, I'm in a hard way. So. My mission is to use virtual reality to drag psychology kicking and screaming into the 21st century. Using methodologies we know work in the real world, but to do it in virtual reality in a way where it's more compelling, more engaging, more impactful, and where we may be able to amplify the treatment effect. Like a muscle in your body, the more you flex your mind, the stronger it gets. When you do this, it helps you build mental resilience. The idea of exposure therapy for PTSD is already validated as an evidence-based approach for treating PTSD. What we're doing with VR is amplifying the effect. The prolonged exposure therapy is kicking down the front door because it requires the individual to talk through their trauma narrative out loud in the present tense as if it's happening now. You're completely immersed in that moment. You can feel it in your body when you talk, you just feel so like tense, but you don't get that normally when you talk unless you're in a really, really deep therapeutic session. So virtual reality does the sensories for you to cue up your mind and say, yep, we're here, we're in combat. One of the key elements in our design of these simulations was that we had to make them customizable to the individual nature of any service member's trauma. Were you driving the Humvee? Were you outside of the vehicle? Were you in the turret? What time of day was it? We can control all that, and as the user goes through the experience, we can make things happen. We can blow up an explosion anywhere around the user at any distance. We can have helicopters fly over jets. We can have insurgents pop up. It, was, it takes a little while getting used to because you're physically moving it. It's reactive to where you look, everything you do, and just hand you your experience and says, here, let's, let's talk about this experience. Let me build your world around you. Let's recreate that for you. And as hard as that sounds, it's a great processing tool because you're right in that moment of, this is what I feel like right now. Hypervigilance might have been good in a combat environment where that might have kept you alive, but now you're always jumpy and edgy because your experience of PTSD makes it so that you're always vigilant. So what happens is the symptoms get overgeneralized back here at home. And if you're driving down the 405 and there's a car parked on the side of the road or there's trash, they're gonna be scanning and lock into that because that might represent an IED. And just kind of like waiting for it to go off and it didn't go off. You just have to kind of work through that feeling. It requires, you know, hard medicine for a hard problem. It requires helping a person go back and entangle with the thing that messed with them. We drill down deep and it can get really emotional because this is heavy stuff. We're going to be talking about it in the present tense for at least 30 minutes repeatedly and really develop a different relationship to the experience such that it's not controlling them, they're controlling it. You know, when I describe this to people, a lot of times they think, oh God, why would you do that to somebody? My answer is we do it because the data, the science, shows us that it works. We're not in the business of erasing memories here. We're in the business of helping people to cope with difficult memories and to move forward. So Brave Minds allowed me to move forward in my life and say, okay, I experienced this great thing called war for better or worse. I've come out on the other side of it. I'm alive. I could grow from that experience. I need to move forward. And then I could actually go talk to a therapist now and move forward with my life.